organized, chaotic. How do those two things go together? But they do. Um, thoughtful. Right, I, I, I started fishing a long, long time ago. So Richard Walker, huge influence. And then when I got into carp fishing, uh, Jack Hilton. Uh, and then there were people like uh, Fred Taylor around at that time. And then in, in terms of people who um, aren't so much names, when I was fishing on my local river, the local expert was the, he was the local cobbler. Um, we don't even, well, we hardly have those now. These you know, are the people who you take your shoes to, to, to get them fixed. And he was an interesting guy. He was deaf. Um, and so you couldn't have a normal conversation with him. I used to go down to his workshop. He had a little, a tiny bit of slate, blackboard and some chalk. And we used to communicate on that. But he used to catch fish out of the river that was beyond the imagination of anybody else there. And to a young kid like me, you know, he's catching four pound chub. He's catching, uh, he even caught, I mean, nobody caught carp in those. He, he caught a 16 and a half pound carp out of the river when nobody had ever knew there were even carp in there. So um, very simple gear and you just see him over the fields on his own catching these amazing fish. Scariest moment on the bank. I, ah, I was uh, I was filming an episode of River Monsters um, four or five years ago in Suriname in South America and this is something um, probably quite a few people have seen. Um, there had been a thunderstorm that morning but the weather had cleared up and we, we then went out. We are on this rock in the middle of the river and there's this almighty crash suddenly come out of nowhere and, and I didn't even think about it, reflex, I just, I just hit the deck. I was, I was talking to the camera but I just hit the deck because it was just so loud. And then uh, we discovered our sound recordist, luckily you know, he didn't have the, the pole in the air at the time, he was actually just with a stills camera. Um, he, he was hit, he said he saw something about, he saw this bright um, sort of glowing thing in front of him about the size of a, of a of a football and, and the next thing he knew he's, 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 he's on his back. I've been fishing since I was seven or eight years old so a quick bit of calculation that's uh, so well over 50 years. Other sporting interests? Um, uh, when I was a kid I played rugby, uh, but that was because I was forced to. I was at school. As soon as, soon as it became voluntary I stopped doing that. Um, I used to play basketball. I, I, I quite enjoyed basketball then. Um, over the years, I've run quite a bit. Uh, scuba diving does that count? It's not. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a sort of active pastime. Um, bit of running. I've mentioned that, haven't I? Um, these days, I just I tend to walk quite a lot. You know, my exercise is walking and going upstairs rather than taking the the elevator or the lift. That would have to be, this, get this, I've, so that would be a headbutt from a fish. Now normally, uh, a normal fish headbutting you is not a problem. This, this was an arapaima, so this was a fish, um, it was a small arapaima, arapaima, which means about 80 pounds, something like that. And I was with these, 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 these Amazonian fishermen, they, they were netting it, so the net was, you know, they'd encircled the, the, the fish with this net, they're gradually closing it in. And this thing just hit me in the in the right in the sternum there, and it was. Uh, I am not exaggerating when I say that I could still feel that after six weeks. It was just the most almighty blow, um, and you know they kill each other. The, the male fish will kill each other, and and uh, I possibly got off lightly. If that had hit me somewhere else, it might have been even worse. I'm finding it hard to single out a particular moment, but I, th I think when I was carp fishing, I used to do a lot of night fishing, and I, I still like fishing at night, and so I'm not, I'm not thinking of any specific night, but there's something about being out and about and being alert and being awake at a time of the, that 24-hour cycle when most people are asleep. You know, most people have no experience of the night, of being out in the night, and that whole it is like a different world and, and I just, uh, you know, I, I still love that experience. Uh, for the kind of fishing I do, um, so, okay, if you're carp fishing, um, it's quite easy to maybe sort of change a hook if it gets blunted or anything. Uh, so hook file, very important. Um, yeah, the sharpness of the hook, very, very, very crucial. Um, 
scissors obviously um, I used to use my teeth I am more you know I never listen to anybody there parents don't do that you know I put both both front teeth are, are half plastic because of uh, things like you know using my teeth as tools which is you know not not recommended uh, and good polarizing glasses very important you know if you can see the fish that is um, that is so important and sometimes you know if they're right on the borderline uh, your you know sunnies are going to make the difference right lost fish normally when you lose a fish it's it, it's sort of act of God you, you replay that that story and um, and it's like but there's no way it would have, you know, it was always going to play out that way. Some, you know, the, 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 the real regrets are where there's human error, where you know if you've done something different. And when I'm fishing, I try and make a point of, I, I'll, I'll always have a plan. If I hook a big fish in this situation, what am I going to do? Do I need to move my position or anything like that? And um, I, the first, well, not the first, but one of the, one of the early times I was, I was fishing with cameras, um, I was sort of under a bit of pressure just to, to, to get lines in the water and um, now I'd be a bit more resistant. I would, no, no, I'm going to do things my way, but you know, I was a bit under pressure getting lines in the water and I hooked a very big fish. This was a gunch catfish in India and so I hadn't done that whole thing of, of planning and um, where I was fishing there was a big rock cliff to my left and there was a, there was, it sort of went in, there's a bit of a sort of an inlet there. And what happened was I hooked a massive fish, um, the battle was starting to go my way, it was clearly a very big fish, and then sudden, then it went round a rock and uh, it cut the line, 90 pound mono, just, just cut it. What I should have done uh, in the early stages of that fight, I should, have, I should have changed my position so that if it went round that corner, I could have pulled it straight out. So lack of planning, um, but it's one of those things, you need experiences like that to, in a way, teach you a lesson. Don't do that again. You know, always, always plan for all the what ifs. Favourite thing about fishing? I th yeah, what is it now? How can you put your finger on it? It's somebody, somebody, there's a very good quote from somewhere. It's like an infinite, who said this? Fishing gives an infinite number of opportunities for hope. Uh, I haven't got that quite right, but you get the sense of that. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's exploration. We are curious animals. We are curious about our environment. And a lot of, as we, you know, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, we become very, very familiar with our, our normal environment. But as soon as you, as soon as you start thinking about that underwater environment that that, that 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 is so mysterious you know we people go a whole lifetime without really understanding you know why why fish behave the way they do um, so I think it's it's an adventure it's it, it's about giving giving free reign to your curiosity it can, it can, people, yeah, at least fake, pe people go, oh, it's, it, people, non-anglers telling me how relaxing it must be. Now, relaxing is like the least, you know, the last word I would use for a lot of the fishing I do. Um, it can be quite painful, it can be uncomfortable, um, but actually, getting very ph philosophical here, it's like, it's like, life would not be so meaningful without the fact of death. Um, Fishing, fishing success would not mean so much without the work, the disappointment, the failure, the suffering. So you, you, if you take away what you regard as the, the bad bit, actually what's left is sort of not worth doing. So it's all, it's all bound up. You know, there, there are, there are uncomfortable bits, but you, you know, in, in a sense, you really wouldn't want to change anything. I have, a, I have a secret, I, when, I, when, I, when I used to carp fish a long, long time ago, I, um, back then it was all about bait formulations and um, 
there is a secret ingredient which um, I, I started to, to use, which I think even to this day, um, carp anglers probably haven't really um, twigged to. And my secret is the fact that I have a secret ingredient. I haven't even written down what it is anywhere. It's just locked away here. And if, you know, there might come a time when I might uh, try that and, and uh, possibly reveal what it is. But that's as, that's as close as you'll get into any of my secrets. Like, 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 like all of us, I, I, I move in, in different worlds. I have my, you know, I have my, my uh, there's my family life, there's uh, professional life, there's fishing life. And so I am in the world of, of entertainment, of, of, of television. And um, I, I don't actually watch a lot of television. Part of it is time. Part of it is I, I don't own a TV. Um, but a, a broadcaster who I used to admire, I say used to admire because he sadly died fairly recently, but um, the American Anthony Bourdain, who was a, you know, um, people say as shorthand, you know, he, he was a chef. He worked for a long time as, 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 a, as a chef, but he ended up making, well, he wrote a really good, very good writer, very, very good writer. And through writing, he got into TV. And he made, uh, there was something about his, you know, his TV programs were very well made and a lot of that was to do with his way with words. So um, his programs, you, you know, I, we all, well, copy, imitate, you know, I, 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 I watch his programs and, and I absorb a certain amount of the way that he did things and, and part of that possibly, go, you know, I, I pull from all different sources, but um, in, in terms of making good, admirable TV, uh, that, that was very much somebody. Tea, uh, preferably green tea, yeah, herbal tea, something like that, hippie tea. <laughs> Favourite biscuit? Um, I'm quite a flapjack, flapjack fan. If that's a, you know, I don't know, for VAT purposes, is that a biscuit? I don't know. Um, but it's not too much sugar, not too much butter, something sort of oaty and... Uh, uh, but I am, I'm a bit of a sucker for chocolate though, I have to say. Yeah, anything with chocolate in. Real chocolate. Um, near where I live, um, there is somebody there who does... I, I, I love Indian food. Most Indian food in this country, I have to say, I'm very sorry, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed by, you know, I get very excited by the idea, then I'm disappointed. Um, however, there's a, near where I live, there's a guy who does very simple thali dishes. So it's basically, it's a bit of rice, it's a bit of veg curry, it's some lentils, it's a bit of uh, mango chutney, a bit of yogurt. And, and, it, and it's great, it's cheap and, and actually, um, I could go on a little bit now. My, my philosophy with food is, is the best food is often it's simple food that's well done. It's not something that's, 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 that's fancy and, and it doesn't quite work. Simple food, well done. So an Indian thali, a very basic sort of rice and curry. You know, if that's done well, brilliant. Right, this wasn't, this wasn't quite on the bank. I was, I was fishing and, and I... Um, doesn't sound very funny to start with, but I was in Australia about 10 years ago, and uh, I was trying to catch a bull, for, bull shark out of the Brisbane River, and myself and the cameraman, everyone else had gone home, and we're fishing sort of around the clock, all sorts of hours, we're totally sleep deprived. We'd had a meal, and um, we took the camera in, the, um, in, in, this, in this, this restaurant, to, you know, so it's, we haven't left it in the van. Uh, we come outside into the road after eating. I'm leaning on the van, cameraman puts the, the camera back inside the van and there's a sliding door and because it's on a hill he gives this an almighty heave and my hand was inside the door so uh, it actually it broke my finger and because your reaction to pain is, is you withdraw from the pain so I ripped it out of the door um, I was suddenly aware there was blood everywhere um, but the, it wasn't so much pain it was shock um, anyway I'm then telling the cameraman I'm saying You've got to film this because uh, we're making this, this program about bull sharks. Here we are where there's blood everywhere. Film this. And we had, and he said, no, no, I'm taking, to, taking you to hospital. And I said, yeah, but just film it first. It'll take 30 seconds. But we ended up having like a, a five minute argument 
about a very surreal argument while I was bleeding on the, on the pavement about um, whether or not to film the blood or, or, or not. And um, just thinking about it now, it's just, it's just, a, just a very sur surreal moment. And, and um, we had to phone up the office in England. You know, we, we've had an injury and there's always, there's always two questions. The first question is, you know, everybody all right? Yes, did you film it? And um, normally all, you always film it, you know, you always, you know, unless, you, unless you're getting in the way of, 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 of the emergency always film it and, and that poor guy has never been able to live that down you know he, he was he cared too much about me uh, there's a few fish I would, I would love to catch in terms of new species I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm, I never tell anybody what those are because I might end up making um, making programs about them but there are a few fish in different places um, that I would like to go and and, 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 and you know that there's a bigger one out there with my name on it and the the thing about when I'm filming is normally um, what we need for a program. We, we need one fish that is big enough for the program and as soon as we've got that uh, we tend to stop uh, fishing because there's loads of other stuff to film. So I normally um, and sometimes it gets a bit physical. I, no I normally, uh, you know, sometimes I have to be dragged, physically dragged away from the water because I've worked out, you know, I've, I might spend a few days I've, I've cracked it, you know, I, I know how to catch these fish now. Okay, I've caught one, it's quite a good size there's a bigger one down there. No, we don't, you know, we don't need a bigger one. We, and so maybe I, there's a few places I'm going back without a film crew and, and there's a bigger one there with, with my name on it.